is it possible to have a relationship with our relationships? I know it sounds bizarre, but just keep listening and I promise it will all make sense. Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the podcast for the over 50 gay male, where we talk about all things that are important to the over 50 gay male and hosted by, you guessed it, two over 50 gay males. Hello, I'm Tom Burke. And I'm Michael Foley. And if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and that little bell so that anytime we have a new episode, you will be notified. So, Mr. Foley, uh, this whole season, we have been talking about all the different types of relationships that guys like us, the over 50 gay male, have to deal with in life. The relationships with the younger gay community, with the lesbian community, with the BTQ plus community, our relationships with dating and aging, and the one that I'm still working on, our relationship with holidays. And I seriously have to tell you that I think I've actually learned a lot. You know, I, I'm looking at my relationships and, and my, my I don't know, having to take kind of more uh, control or just ownership of my relationships. So for you, what's, what's a big takeaway that you've learned about relationships? You know, I think this season has brought to the forefront, forefront <laughs> our, our, our need to realize that it's not all gay, it's not all lesbian, it's not all bi, it's not all trans, it's not all black, it's not all white, that it is every aspect of that proverbial rainbow. Right. And that we need to embrace all of it. And that means that we need to learn to listen to each other and to push ourselves beyond our comfort zones and just to be willing to maybe think of something differently than we had before. And that, you know, that thing that's really difficult for all of us to say, oh, maybe I was wrong. Right? <laughs> yeah. Because, exactly. you know, our truth is our truth, but it's not someone else's truth. And our ability to be able to listen to someone else's truth and to embrace that we don't have to agree with it, but to embrace it and to allow that to be their truth, I think, makes us all a little bit better. Well, I think one of the words that you said is so profound. It's not all. I think that's where we all fall, all of us fall into that. Oh, all the gays are like this. All the lesbians are like that. All the white people are like that. Even all the straight people. No, we are all that. I think that's one of the big things I've learned as well. We're individuals, you know? I mean, look at you and I. Yeah, we happen to both be gay men over the age of 50. We happen to both live in Palm Springs. We happen to both have lived in Los Angeles for a really long time. And yet, we are completely different. Yeah. We, we are part of the same track, but we are just two completely different rails. Right. And, you know, if we learn to actually run side by side smoothly, life is so much more rich. Oh, my God. I mean, seriously, Michael, we had a dinner party the other night, as we do. And, of course, I was talking all about our podcast. Uh, but I was regaling everybody with the things that you have taught me. <laughs> you know, was, about was, was the wolf one of them? Yes, it was. <laughs> a woof on scruff, sniffies, on scruff. all, you know, all kinds of things that is n that are not in my world. You have introduced those to me. And yet, again, people will gl clump us into, oh, all those old gay guys, all, you know, no, we are completely different people. But that's what makes a really solid friendship by bringing, you know, different things to it. Uh, same thing, our podcast would not be as amazing as it is if we weren't bringing different things to the table, you know, if it, we were just sitting here talking about the exact same things and agreeing on the exact same things, how boring is that? Seriously, you know? and I, I think we also have to learn to allow each other to be more than one thing, because, exactly. you know, early on we got a comment from somebody about how, why do I, me, Michael, the single guy always have to talk about sex 
which first of all, I don't because, you know, we talk about a lot of things, but sex is a huge part of human beings' lives. And, you know, to be sex positive is not a bad thing. And just because I'm a gay man, I shouldn't feel shame to talk about that. Um, oh, not at but all. I, there are also other aspects of me, like like you know, I said in a previous episode, I want to be twirled around the dance floor like Belle and Beast, and you know, experience that kind of love. That you could be more, you could be sexual and emotional. That you know, those two things can exist in the same world. And I think we have to allow our idea of what somebody is to not anchor them and l allow them to sail and us to join that trip with them and to take that journey with them. Well, exactly. And how fun is it to peel away the layers of somebody and learn more and more about them? I mean, that's what brings interest into relationships. And, you know, if we were all sitting around on our Barkle loungers watching Fox News and nothing else, our world is so small. And we just have this one little view on everybody, which is why in this last season, I have learned to like, no, open up that view and treat people as the individuals and and find the joy in peeling away their their obvious layers. Yeah. You know, how great is that, right? Because there, um, there is always more there, you know? Right. Nobody is ever what they seem to be. Oh, my God. They, they, have, they have lived a life. There is a history there. You don't know where they walked. You don't right. know the challenges and the struggles that they have had, even though on the surface, everything might be all shiny and pretty. You know, you, you, we don't know. And, and you're not going to know. Unless, yeah, there you go. Until you ask. That was something that you have said all the way along um, that we've been doing this about how you love to ask questions. You know, and I'm that like uptight waspy guy that never asks, you know, don't ask me questions. I'm not, <laughs> but I'm opening up. I'm, yeah. I'm bringing more of myself out, you know, thanks to being open. Um, so, yeah, I think for both of us, that, that's a really huge learning thing that we've learned about relationships is that the word all doesn't exist. We are individuals and each person has multitude of layers and how exciting and fun that is to peel those away. And, you know, even people that we don't agree with, you know, not all Republicans are, what's her name, giving blowjobs at a play, you know? There was a hand job. Oh, okay, well... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Although I'm, I'm, I'm assuming had they, so I had the ushers not stepped in, her head would have been in his lap very. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. But Ms. Ms. You Miller know, and Bobert. That there you go. I couldn't think of her name. Of, um, yeah. You know, and they're not all Lindsey Graham, and they're not all you know. And I think that's something that we as well, you know, clump people together. Yeah, they're not our friends, but they're not all horrible, horrible enemies as well. And I think we have to just take each person as an individual. So, you know, thank you for taking me on that journey this season about relationships and learning about individuality, I guess. Yeah, uh, I'm, over, I'm overjoyed we got the chance to do that together and, and, and learn everything that we learned. It's, it's, it's been a great ride. Right. You know, something else that was very important uh, for us both to learn this season talking about relationships was the fact that in order to really have a healthy and uh, healthy relationship and to treat people as individuals, we have to get off that bark lounger. We have to get off yeah. that little, I'm only watching this one thing in my life and I'm not going to expand. I'm not going to look, you know, in a different direction. And in order to really keep growing and keep, you know, bringing new things into our lives, we have to be informed of all kinds of things. We have to take the time to learn about new things and to really, I don't know, um, become involved more, you know? Without being involved, you're sitting alone by yourself in a dark room. Yeah, so, embra embrace that curiosity that we all had when we were younger and bring it back into your life because it's still there, you know? We just tend to as we get older, be comfortable in the environment that we know. Right. Because it's easier. We know what yeah. to expect, and it, it just is what it is. It's going to be that status quo day. 
and there's nothing more exciting to me, and I know you too, Tom, is to step outside of that box and maybe try something new. I've seen you do it. I, you oh, know, it's, it's, oh, my God. <laughs> I, I've been trying all kinds of new yeah. things. Uh, you know, again, we've moved to a new city. It was meeting new people, going to new places. There's a lot of stepping outside of the box. But in order to really form healthy relationships, we do have to become involved. And there are, there are three ways um, that we as healthy relationship humans can become involved are um, through socially, through politically, and through personally. So let's first talk, I know, about socially. This is a big one for you as well. Um, I moved with my husband, so I had a built-in kind of social yeah. life right there. You, on the other hand, a single guy, as we've, as we've talked about, that first step into the dating world, into the social world, it's, it's difficult to do alone. It is very difficult to do alone. And, you know, we've talked before about, you know, that I have social anxiety and it's been a challenge my whole life. So, um, but I continue to push myself and it does get easier. Right. And I think it gets easier because I allow myself to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I hope, if nothing else, that people took away from this season that, um, you know, dealt with relationships, especially the ones regarding ourselves, is is to make yourself feel uncomfortable sometimes, even if it's for five minutes, you know, right. even if you put yourself somewhere and you're like, I'm really uncomfortable, let me get through it. And then if you decide to leave, you at least did it for five minutes more than you did the day before. And that's fucking huge. Right. It's awesome. Awesome. Um, so yeah, really putting ourselves out there, getting involved socially, not only it's not only just dating. Um, everybody knows that you love to go to musical bingo, the, all of our listeners. Um, you know, you put yourself out there. Like I said, we just had a dinner party. We're putting ourselves out there, really getting involved with the community. We both, during Pride, you were wor uh, working with uh, the center. I was working with HRC, putting ourselves out there, yep. getting involved with the community. Did we want to do it? All the time? No. Mm, no. I, I could have been happy eating cupcakes, watching television, but you know what? I want to keep creating healthier and healthier relationships, yeah. so I know I need to get involved and get and out I wanna, there. I want to share a quick story about Musical Bingo, because okay. I think anybody who listens to us knows how much I love it. The very <laughs> first time I went there, I walked in, and it was so overwhelming to me. Yeah that I turned around and walked out because I just couldn't handle it in that moment. And I could have very easily never went back because there were so many people there right. and it was so raucous. And I just thought, oh, hell no, I don't know anybody here. Aww. And I made a beeline for the door and I left. And I went back the next week, but I did that thing we talked about, you know, during our holiday episodes, I went early. Right. I found my spot, which was over in a corner. And I sat and I had the best time. Oh, right? Yeah. And now it's become something that you just look forward to. Yeah. Right? And it's become an environment that I feel really comfortable in now because, you know, people I don't know come over and say hello. And it's the same with me because you see the same people. Sure. You know, it's like, hey, how's your week? How's you? How you doing? And um, yeah, I am so grateful that I pushed myself past that first week. And how many relationships have you started with people you now you do know them yeah. right dozens literally yeah. dozens because you put yourself out there yeah. because you took that first step um i know i too i will go somewhere and then just like run out and be like yeah. all right i'll try this again you know i mean it's so funny what happens isn't it like yeah. my heart started pounding my head was ringing and i'm like oh my god i i can't stay here and right you know to to be able to push myself to go back i think it, it it really makes me happy to think of that moment. Sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah. So in order to really have grounded, healthy relationships, we need to be involved. We need to be involved socially. Take those few steps, you know. And, you know, you also brought me along to Musical Bingo. That's That's another great way 
to get involved socially is by bringing someone along who might not, like I would not have had the guts to go <laughs> at all, at all, right? Um, but having you there was like, okay, I can do this because, you know, you were there or you were holding my hand and bringing me into this crazy place with so many people. So that's another way, you know, maybe we are feeling comfortable somewhere. Let's bring someone else in. Let's help someone else have those moments, uh, those becoming involved socially. Yeah, it's sort of so, like a bumper car, right? If you have that, <laughs> that you, you have that safety around you, right? It makes right. it a little bit easier. It makes right. it makes that challenge and those those hits just a little bit easier to absorb if you have that comfort around you and definitely other people provide you with that. Or I can just keep eating cupcakes and I'll pad myself enough that I can just bounce all over the place. <laughs> um, all right, so let's talk about another form of being involved uh, that helps us create really positive, healthy relationships. And that way is politically. This is a very important thing. And I'm going to hand this over to you because you are definitely the political guy far more than I am. So yeah. tell us, how, how can we become involved or why is it important to become involved politically? You know, I think over the decades, especially during our lives, we um, got a little jaded and sort of had that mentality, oh, my vote doesn't matter. What I do isn't going to make a difference. But I want, you know, I want our, our generation to remember where we were 30, 40 years ago. Oh, right. And to look where we are now. And granted, you know, we haven't reached the promised land. I'm not sure we ever will in our lifetime. But because of people who got involved politically, we, we have experienced massive change. And I think it's so important, especially at our age, because we're a huge voting block. And right. I'm always amazed at how many people in our demographic choose not to vote. You know, that happened in 16, where so many people across this country thought Hillary was a shoo in right. and went, oh, my vote doesn't matter. I don't need to go today. And the reality is she lost by about 1,000 votes in about 12 precincts in the swing states. And all those people who chose to stay home are responsible for Donald Trump. And I've had this conversation with people who, the first thing I ask somebody if they wanna have a political conversation is, do you vote? And if the answer is no, I said, then you have absolutely nothing I wanna hear. And that's not me being judgmental, it's just that you're not involved. That's like somebody talking to me about tennis who doesn't play tennis. Right. You could get the, the mechanics of it, but you don't know the game. So, you know, unless we get involved, we get absolutely what we deserve is kind of how I feel. And again, all those folks out there who went, mm, well, my vote doesn't matter. Maybe I won't go to the polls today. Um, you know, we have to thank for that orange boil on the ass of humanity who is running again. And he's ahead in the polls against Biden which I just can't, for the life of me, fathom. I can't. I mean, yes, he is running again, supposedly, which I also cannot fathom or even kind of comprehend. But why is it so important now to be involved? Uh, because if we don't, our, our little American experiment and democracy is literally over. This isn't hyperbole. This isn't one of those, you know, rile up the truth, get every, troops and get everybody scared shitless. This is the reality. He showed us what he was going to do in his first right. term. And if he gets a second term, we're done. This is it. And yeah. if, if you don't get involved, you have zero to say on the matter when the shit does hit the fan. But not only is the shit going to hit the fan, but as we're talking about relationships, every relationship that we have right now is going to be changed in a really bad way. Yeah, like I can't even imagine experiencing you and your husband as a couple who is no longer married. Like that that could be taken away from you guys is, right. is horrifying. Yeah, uh, unbelievable. I mean, just the fact that 
everything, as you said, that we have all fought for. And you had said, like, you know, maybe we haven't hit the promised land or gotten to the promised land yet, but compared to what it was 40 or 50 or 60 years ago, yeah. this is the promised land. And we can't we can't let that slip away. We can't take that away. And it's not just us, not just for us gay guys, but for everyone that's out there, women and children and who got a, anybody who is not a white man. Yeah. Or Christian. Oh, you're fucked. Right. If you are not a white Christian, you're fucked. Yeah. Right. And until you realize that, um, we, we got a real problem. And, you know, we're in a bubble here. Let's be real. We live in Palm right. Springs, which is a bubble in a bubble in the state of California. Right. So... I'm sending this out to all the folks out there who have family or friends in Pennsylvania or Ohio or Michigan. Have conversations with them. Because again, if anything that this season has taught me is that conversations change perspective. And if you approach somebody who loves you, but doesn't necessarily agree with who we are at a core level, that having a conversation may open a door for them that they think, oh, their love is like my love, or they do feel the way that I feel. So maybe I should vote to protect them as well. Right. But also, as you said, we're reaching out to everybody and we have listeners everywhere and we love to hear from them. Um, and we have started a Facebook group mm -hmm. just for our listeners, which would be an amazing place. If you're in Georgia and there's something that we can be doing in California to help you guys, let us know. Let's all, you know, come to our Facebook group. It's at No Two Gays About It. Um, and the have those. The pro yeah, we have two yeah. Facebook groups now. The one is uh, No Two Gays About It, and that's a public group, so you could go okay. there. But if you if you want a safer place, we have a new page called No Two Gays Community, and that's, that's by invite only. And that's a safe place for anybody in this community who doesn't feel like they want to share their their feelings or uh, on a public page where any troll can access it. Right, um, which is which is a great place for us you know, for our listeners or anyone out there to say like, hey, I'm in a deep red state. We're trying to fight. We could use you guys to write some postcards or, you know, I don't know, yeah. like have those conversations together uh, because we want all to be involved politically as well. And let yeah, us for know. all of us folks who do live in blue states, you could get in contact with the DNC or the ACLU in any red state and ask them what you can do. There's phone banking now, like you just said, send post, you could send postcards, right? They said, they'll send you everything you need. And you just write and you fill them out and you send them out because there are things that we could do to help other states get across that line. And it's hugely important. We stay involved and form these relationships with people who are not us in our bubble to form these relationships with the uh, gay guys over 50 who are in a red state who might need help or who need to have that support. So a great place to be involved, to continue growing our healthy relationships. So, all right. So personally, politically, and finally, a, a very, very important place. Huge. Is personally. We cannot have successful, fulfilling, healthy relationships if we're not taking care of ourselves. And we have discussed this a lot. This is very important, our relationship with ourselves, with our physical health, with our mental health. Everything about us needs to be in a good place so that when we step out into that light, we can surround ourselves with other good. Um, but this is a tough one, you know? Yeah, physician heal thyself is usually the, you know, there's a reason that that's a metaphor. Because um, right. there's always truth in metaphors, and usually it's easier to fix somebody else's lives and not necessarily our own. And for those of us, I mean, we're all aging. It's a tough thing. We've discussed this a lot. Um, and there's going to be more and more health issues as we're aging. And how do we combat that? Well, you know, first of all, you've got to get out there and go to doctors. A lot of guys don't like to do that, but you know what? You got to take control. You got to take your meds if you're on meds. You got to get out there and exercise. Just by freaking walking a little bit a day is going to change the way you're feeling about life. 
get off that barca lounger, get outside, walk around the block, you know, walk your dog, do whatever you can exercise wise. I know you're a, you're a big guy going to the gym, correct? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. It's funny, Sunday I was, I had my ass parked. First of all, I spent a lot of the day in bed just because I was exhausted. Um, <clears throat> and then got up and made it all the way to the couch. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then plop Good my boy. ass there. <laughs> Good and it was boy. like, there was a point after about an hour and a half, I went, I have to do something. And I forced, seriously forced myself because yeah. I'd been a little under the weather as well. Um, and I was like, I have to go to the gym. And I got my ass up and I did. And oh my God, the difference that an hour and a half made yeah, is right? just not only physically because I got shit moving and you just feel better because your body gets to expel a lot of things. Um, but mentally, that's yeah. why I go to the gym. I hate going to the gym. I always have. Right. I, I, would, I would be like you, you know, except I would be eating Pillsbury Slice and Bake Cookies <laughs> where you eat cupcakes. Right. I would love, or pizza. Oh, pizza. Uh, <laughs> love to sit on a couch and just do that for the rest of my life. But, you know, mm. the reality is, I feel like crap when I do. Right. And then we wind up beating ourselves up, right? And That's it perpetuates. the perpetuates. It's this just horrible downward spiral. I did that myself this morning. I woke up, you know, it was cold, and I'm talking Palm Springs cold, so it wasn't, I don't know, what was it, like 65 or something in the morning. I was freezing. I'm like, I can't go out, you know, and I started beating myself up. Well, if you don't go for your hike, then you can't, you know, like, it's like, well... I got my ass out. I went on my hike, hour and 45 minutes, I think. And yeah, I felt great afterwards. I felt great during. And something that I always do on my hikes, which I know I've talked a lot about that here, is when I'm hiking or when I'm doing swimming my laps, I always go over what are the five things I'm grateful for today. That itself puts me in a mental place of like, wow, okay. Life might suck. Life might be hard. I hate aging. The holidays are coming. You know, all the things that... Uh, and yet, I got myself into a better place. And so then I could come home and instead of being like a real dick to my husband, or, you know, I had to do work this morning, be a dick to whoever I had to deal with, I was pleasant and nice and felt happier. So those relationships were, you know, also being fed and nurtured as well. So, yeah, we definitely have to take care of ourselves physically. And if, as we're aging, like I said, there's going to be a lot of health issues, maybe we're not going to be able to go to the gym anymore. Maybe we're not going to be able to hike anymore. But we can do some physical things, you know, chair yoga. Or Oh, my you know, God, like that's so funny you said that, because I swear <laughs> to God I was just going to say that. And I really? have no, no idea why it's continually in my feed right now because apparently Facebook found Mine out too, I'm really right? old yeah, that that's chair yoga <laughs> pops up every fucking day. <laughs> like, that's it. Whoa, who's watching me? <laughs> and the guy doing chair yoga is this like young, incredibly good looking cut guy. And I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. And I click off of it. You know, if it was like some fat dumpy guy like me, I'd be like, okay, I'll watch Oh, this. what's funny is I get the fat dumpy guys. Oh, Sorry I get, I get that. the, I hate this term, but I can't, I have, it's the only thing I can, no, I'm going to not, I'm not going to not going to use it. I get the older guys with the beards and who are probably in their sixties. Oh, come on. Use the word. I know what you want to no, say. No, I'm not saying it. I hate the word. Don't say hey, it. Hey, daddy. Don't, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that word. Oh my God. Hey, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Um, but yeah, I get the, I get the older guys. That's so funny. You get younger guys. Well, you know, it's all who we are. Um, all right, right. So besides physically, we also have to take care of ourselves mentally as well. Because, you know, like I had said, coming off my hike, I felt mentally really charged and, and feeling in a good place. But if we don't take those moments you know if you need help we've talked about this if you need help seek help easy to do now you have a phone in your hand you have a computer you can find help you don't have to even see people or like me i i really feel this just talking about what i'm grateful for you know yeah like i said life could be a big mess but you know i also have a lot of things to be thankful for um that helps my mental being what what helps you mentally well you know it's funny that you just said that because 
I, th- I think of the not so happy mood I was before we started this. Mm-hmm. And then just having conversation with somebody. Like I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a happy mood now, you know? It, it, right? It, it is such a, a reminder, first of all, of, you know, I think why it's important that we're doing this. Um, it's a reminder for me that uh, it, don't shut down, don't shut up, because that's my initial instinct is to shut yeah. off. And just having conversation with you and laughing and just, you know, calling you a motherfucker because you said daddy makes me feel better. <laughs> but, and that's the point of our entire season is the relationships that we have in life are so incredibly important. We have to treat them as important things. Yeah. And that is by feeding them and nurturing them. And the only way we can do that is by taking care of ourselves as well. So, and so that, that mental aspect that you're talking about, you know, pick up a phone and have a conversation with somebody. Yeah, right. Meet, call somebody and say, let's meet for coffee and just have a conversation because that will change everything in your day. Right. And again, if you are at the aging process where you can't get out, you can't easily go to have meet someone for coffee, just talking to them on the phone. You yeah. know, from now on, I know if you ever call me and say, like, I'm having a bad day, I'm going to be like... What's wrong, Daddy? <laughs> Just <laughs> I, 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 I. <laughs> Hey, Daddy. Uh, so yeah. can I, do I start calling you Mommy then? Oh my God, I would kill you. Oh and good, then there we go. There we have it. You say Daddy. Literally. Oh, like, why would you call me mommy. mommy? Why? Why? Is it going to bother you? Yeah, it Then would that's be. why. <laughs> but at, at least Daddy's a male. Like, <laughs> come on, I'm not... The female of anything, whatever. All right. <laughs> Let's just move it along before my... Yeah. Um, another really great way to kind of get involved but make sure that we are healthy ourselves is spiritually. And this is like a big thing for a lot of people because it means so many things different kinds of things. And I know earlier we talked about don't use that all word because a lot of people think spirituality and they think of born again Christians and all the like. Just organized religion. Organized religions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Which really can turn off people. But spirituality is not all about organized religion. No. And I have to say, even hearing that sometimes it makes my skin crawl. Sure. I consider myself a very spiritual person. Um, it's still, I still go, ooh, ooh, you know, because of the way we were raised and, uh, you know, taught to hate ourselves because of religion. Um, right. That spirituality means is, again, it's very personal. It's, it's our journey it, it, and it belongs to only in us. So whatever it means for you, if that is getting in touch with nature, if that is, if your spirituality is just communing with friends, then that's awesome. Whatever works for you, just right. to remember to feed your soul um, on a level that we don't normally do every day in, in the helter skelter and craziness of the world. Um, we tend to forget that thing which feeds us on that level. And uh, for me, it's, it's reading uh, or um, listening uh, on my Air- AirPods. I, I have a book that I follow that I listen to regularly when I'm in a Great. In a shithole and kind of feeling crappy because it reminds me, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's so much bigger than us out there. And um, just to remember that we're such a little speck on the, you know, on the beach of the, the universe. And right. It, it gives you perspective. And we're not alone. You know, the whole thing that we've been talking about for weeks and weeks is just how important relationships are to people you if you're alone you just become so isolated and bitter and you just start using that word all all those people all those people that don't care about me uh, you know so yeah we are so grateful to first of all have this platform to be able to talk together to talk to other people and to explore all of these different things that are important to guys like us the gay men over 50 um because it's a it's a wacky journey but we're not alone but you are gonna be alone if you're not really forming healthy grounded real relationships and, and it takes a lot of work I say this both tom and i understand that propensity to want to be alone 
Because I think the both, both of us did kind of start this conversation with, uh, I hate people. And, um, <laughs> you know, and I, I, again, I just, I, I marvel at the difference in my mind frame from where we were at the, before we started and, and just chatting and, and to now. So reach out, folks. Um, you know, right. it's, it, it is on us. Basically, it comes down to that. You know, you, you, you get what you give. And if you just sort of open the door a little bit, you know, I, I, I think it's going to change your day. You just never know what daddy is going to come walking through that door. Or mommy. I, fuck you. All right. So let's uh, get back to a little bit more positivity and happiness. And, you know, this is a really great place for us to end our discussions on relationships this has been a really great great season um normally we would go to one of our or actually my favorite segment of our show which is the savage side eye but we can't we're not going to be negative today so let's move over to our other segment which is called the happy gay moment of the week michael bring some happiness to us what's a really happy gay moment for this week well, for me, what the happy gay moment is for this week is that we get to come back after the new year and do another season. Because again, yeah. this feeds me. This this makes me happy. Just having conversation with you, you know, and having Jessica back there, you know, cheering us on and doing all the grunt work the for work. us. Yes. <laughs> the real work, yeah. Um, you know, fills me. And yeah. that that's my happy gay moment. It is a happy gay moment. And as I mentioned earlier, we have the absolute best listeners and the best watchers. Those of you who are watching us on YouTube, please continue. And if you haven't yet, hit like and subscribe, um, because if you're not watching us, you are missing out. Um, But it is a happy moment. And I, I really would like to throw out to all of the people who are watching or listening us, and we're going to come up with our new theme, our new arc for next season. This season was all about relationships. What's something that all of you gay men over 50 feel is an important thing that we tackle? Um, We want you to join our conversation. That was the whole point of us starting this. Um, So please join our conversation. Let us know what you think is an important uh, subject or a theme to carry us through a whole season. And yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to coming back here and meeting more and more of you out there. This has been an amazing experience. Uh, so yes, very happy moment. Uh, and yeah, just our- I want to elaborate on that, <clears throat> Sure, that this fills me. The reason it fills me is because we have the most amazing listeners. And they, you know, we wouldn't be here if, you know, if it was just you and me having a conversation and no one was out there. So definitely a shout out and a thank you to everybody who takes the time to bring us into your lives and, and, and make us part of your day. We can't tell you how much we appreciate that. Definitely. As I mentioned earlier, I always think of the five things I'm grateful for every day. And you guys out there are definitely one of my five. I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to speak with all of you. I'm very grateful for my friendship with Michael um, and look forward to continuing it all next season. So, Michael, I ask people to reach out to us. How can they do that? Uh, you could read a, reach us across social media at No Two Gays About It. And that's the number two. I'm sure most of you know that by now. So it's no, the number two gays about it. And that is all across social media. We're also on TikTok. And please find us on YouTube and check us out there. And like Tom said earlier, make sure you like and subscribe and ring your little bell. Um, yeah, so. Okay, that. so I guess that's it, Michael. This is it for us this season. Thank you very much. It's been uh, incredibly uh fulfilling to all of us. I do want to ask everyone who is listening to us on a podcast to leave a review for us on whatever platform it is that you're listening to so that we can help grow our show. That would be um, a thing that I would also be very grateful for. But until next season, Michael. Until next season, Tom, thank you very much for being here with me. And thank you, everybody out there for having a listen. We'll see you next year. See ya.